Welcome to Ghost Whisperer, Evolution of an Avatar, a behind the scenes look at episode 403, Ghost in the Machine. It's working! You're my hero! If I'd lost the inventory, your mom would have quit. Well, the files were all there. I just had to defrag your hard drive. Please, watch your language, we have company. Ned, Eli, Eli, Ned. Oh, sick! Old World 2, is this version 5.0? I'm online right now. Uh, there's my avatar. Avatar? What is that, some sort of ancient weapon? Uh, no, it's me, or uh, uh, what I look like in the game. Uh, it could look like the actual gamer, or, or be a complete fantasy. You can pick hair, skin color, clothes, you can be anyone, do anything. See, there you are. You just went virtual. Yeah, but I would never wear my hair like that. Your avatar does. It's in Ghost in the Machine. What we find is that Melinda, which is Jennifer Love Hewitt, is going to hunt down a ghost who's targeting young girls on the web. So in order to do that, she has to go where they live, and where they live is on the web. Hence, we created an avatar for Jennifer Love Hewitt. In this episode, we happen to go into a computer, and I think the challenge was mostly in that to create a world within a world, and then to have a reason for Melinda to go into that world. So there's a huge amount of green screen work in this episode, and very large physical areas of green screen, because we were trying to create major urban exterior environment. There was a lot of discussions that went on, what's the best way to treat what was written? If they should shoot it practically and we do a little bit of enhancement or if we should just shoot it all against green screen and we create the whole world. That presented a whole other set of problems because you need to know some basic things about the geographic reality when you're putting people into a, a situation like this. What we decided to do then is we storyboarded everything and came up with these really cool sequences. We needed a very large area and we took stage 20 over here at Universal and we probably took about half the stage. It was a huge green screen, the biggest green screen I've ever worked with and we put tracking marks throughout. It was a big undertaking. We had to map out in advance where the ends of buildings were going to be and doorways and benches and things so that when we shot against the green screen and those things weren't inside our viewfinder they would work out correctly when the image was transplanted on top of it. We actually had to paint everything around it because nothing was real. It was the green screen and what our CGI department drew and painted and built this great virtual world. The great thing about Armin and our visual effects people is that I didn't have to write to the green screen. Whatever I put on paper, they made happen. This was the largest visual effects episode for Ghost Whisperer since the beginning. Just the sheer number of shots and the complexity of the shots. When we set out to do this, we knew we could pull it off. We were really confident with our team at Eden Effects. Knowing what we had there kind of gave us the courage to go ahead and agree to a lot of this because of the team that we've been working with for years now. And so when you know what you have in your toolbox, you're, you're not afraid to build anything. Essentially, just start off by going in and designing individual buildings and elements and working out a camera move and as we're flying down through the set, zoom into our actual live arcade. Eden uses a lot of different software to uh, pull this all off. Compositing is done in After Effects and some of the guys also work uh, in Digital Fusion. Also for the 3D work they use Lightwave. We wanted to have it be as real as possible in describing the world that they're creating out of CGI. And what I envisioned in my head was something that was a heightened reality. We did um, reference Blade Runner just as a look of what we were thinking what this world you know, would look like. Also Metropolis was another movie that had this futuristic sense that we wanted to add to this virtual world. And the arcade was Jennifer Love, you were walking through green screen with other various people in it. And then when we went to final, you had Jennifer Love, you would, and some of the various people and them playing with things that were put in all in post-production. Like the car game, there are these light paintings that people do where they expose the camera for a long time and someone had done something like that for a car. And we thought, well, that would be something that you might see in a virtual world as a game. So we had our crew build just the car seats with the steering wheels and rig it with lights and we would create the outline in CG. For me as a writer, this is one of those experiences that happen once in a while where what you envisioned and what you get are worlds apart, but in this instance it was so much better. Okay, that's enough fun. 
It was... Everything in there. It was, it was real for my ghost. You were kicking some ass. I was, right? <sighs> Don't miss Ghost Whisper. Friday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, only on CBS.